My name is Father Lee Marshall. I'm a priest of the Diocese of Hallam in England. And I'd like to begin my talk with a prayer. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? Let's try it again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So often when we pray, we go, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then we just crack into our, break into our prayer. But that in itself is a beautiful prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It tells us who God is. God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Trinity. When we use holy water, it tells us who we are because it reminds us of our baptism, that we are children of God. And it shows us through the cross, we make the sign of the cross, our destiny, where we're going. We're destined to be like God. So when we say it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. There's so much, such richness just in that small prayer. And it's actually that prayer really that, that I want to talk about today, or part of it. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. So perhaps just close your eyes for a moment and just think about your image of God. When I say, think about God the Father, think about God the Son, think about God the Holy Spirit, what comes to mind? And imagine now you've got a picture of perhaps God the Father, he's, a, he's an old man, he's perhaps stood on a cloud, he's got a big white beard, maybe he's a little bit bald. And then you've got Jesus, he's looking quite cool in heaven, he's got perhaps his white tunic on, maybe he's got his sandals on, and um, you know his long flowing hair and his beard. And then somewhere up a tree in the nest, maybe there's the Holy Spirit. And that's perhaps our image of God. And we can be forgiven for that because that's often how God is depicted in, in our art. But, but that's not God. That's not God. And I want to just talk today and maybe just tease out that, that image of God. So to help us to really understand who God is a little bit deeper. So what can we say about God? God is one. God is one. And that is what God revealed in this beautiful book, the Bible, the Old Testament, especially to the people of Israel. So imagine Moses. Moses is out there, he's looking after his father-in-law's sheep, and this is Exodus 3, and he's tending the sheep, and all of a sudden, he comes to the Mount, Mount Horeb, and he sees this, this burning bush, and he goes to investigate, and as he, as he gets closer, as he gets closer to the bush, the bush, the Lord says, Moses, Moses, he says, here I am. Take off your sandals because this is holy ground. So Moses takes off his, his sandals and God says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. So Moses, he covers his face. And then there's this conversation between God and Moses and God gives Moses this mission to go and free the people from Egypt. But then Moses turns to God and says, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say? And here is perhaps one of the most important verses in the Bible, Exodus 3, 14. God said to Moses, yeah, her, were, her. That's my name. Ye, her, were, her. Somewhere along the line, we added vowels and we got Yahweh, but that's not, we're not supposed to be able to pronounce the name of God. It's unpronounceable, it's untranslatable. The best we can get is, God says, I was who I was, or I am who I am, or I will be who I will be. There's eternity in the name of God. God says, I am who am. In other words, there is no other, just me. So from that moment, the people of Israel know that they have one God. And that is in their prayer. The, the great prayer of the, 
of the Jewish people, the Shema Israel, when they say, when Moses says to the people, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. The Lord your God is one. That's their foundational prayer. And actually, that is at the root of the identity of the people of Israel, the Jewish people. It's what separated them from everybody else. Think about the people of the Egyptians. So the Egyptians had many gods, but Israel had one God, and their God defeated all these false gods. And then the land of Cana, the Canaanites, which they inhabited, many gods, the Baals, but the, the, the God of Israel defeated those false gods. And then the Philistines, who they fought against, and then later the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and then the Romans, all had these many, many false gods. But the God of Israel was, is one. And that is what separates the people of Israel, the Jewish people. God is one. And the, the Ten Commandments, the first commandment, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no false gods before me course we don't have any false gods today do we of course not we never put wealth or pleasure or power or honor or whatever it is before God so that commandment applies to us so that's the first thing we can say about God God is one I can understand that I can add up to one I'm, I'm not a great mathematician but even I can get my head around the idea that God is one but then, this happens, and this is an earthquake. The angel Gabriel appears to the young virgin, and she tells her that she will give birth to a son, and she must name him Jesus. And Mary, she's frightened, but the angel says, do not be afraid, and here it is. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. That is a theological earthquake. God is one, but hang on a minute. Who's this Holy Spirit? And then this Son, the Son of God. Well, what's the relationship between the Son of God and then presumably the Father? Are they, are they both God? So all of a sudden, this idea that God is one is, is really challenged, fundamentally challenged. And then Jesus, in his life, he did these amazing things. The miracles that he did, the, um, the, the teaching with authority, the, the forgiving people's sins. So only God could forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins, but Jesus says your sins are forgiven. He's claiming to be God. And then the death, the resurrection, he shows that he's God. And some of the things that he said, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Only God can say that. He says, the Father and I are one. God is one, the Father and I are one. What is he saying? Try this one, John 8:58. Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Makes no sense, but then we go back to that verse, Exodus 3, 14. What is the name of God? I am, who am. Jesus takes the name of God. So Jesus claims to be God, and then he introduces this other character, the Holy Spirit. John 14, verse 15. I will ask the Father and he will send you another advocate, another one, another helper, another one like me. This is the spirit of truth. Acts 5, to sin against the Holy Spirit is to sin against God. So, confused? God is one. The Father is God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Where does that leave us? 
And the church then, in those early years after the resurrection, started this process of discernment and working all of this out. And then finally, we come up with the formula that we understand today, the Holy Trinity. God is one, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a mystery. The words we have are finite, they're flawed, they're, they're limited. And we're trying to describe God who is infinite with our human words. So even just what I've said, God is one but three persons within God. As soon as we think of persons, we think of human beings. But that's not God. God is a mystery. And this is the best way, the best way we can understand, the best words we can use. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. And so the best we can do really then in our humanity to describe God is to say, well, what is God like? So we get these similes. So we have St. Patrick, God is like a shamrock. Or another one, God is like the sun. So you have the Father as the sun, the rays of the sun, perhaps Jesus, and then the, the heat, the light from the sun, the Holy Spirit. But all these images are flawed. Another one which I used to love is the atom. So the atom which is the indivisible unit. Surely that's a great image of God. The atom, which is one, but then within the atom, you've got a proton, a neutron, an electron. But then they split the atom, so we can't use the atom anymore. Or perhaps we could say God is like a mansion, and the Old Testament reveals the splendor, the beauty, the awe of this wonderful mansion, which is God. But then in the New Testament, Jesus opens the door and invites us into the mansion and we discover that there's just three magnificent rooms. It's still one building, but within it, we get to the interior of God. But all of these images are flawed. All of them in some way are limited. The best that we have, the best description that we can use for God is what God reveals himself, and it's this. God is love. God is love. And in that, that reveals that God is a relationship, because to say God is love, if I say, if I say I love, I love you, that's totally different to saying that I am love. If I am love, well then love must have a lover, a beloved, and this force that binds the lover and the beloved, which we call the love, that binds them. And subject and object and the love that binds them. So to say that God is love implies a relationship. The Father is the lover, the Son is the beloved, and that force, that love that binds them, that unites them, is the Holy Spirit. So God is love reveals that God is not static. God is not like a mountain or God is not a cloud of gas or, or, or whatever. God is a relationship, a relationship of love. St. Catherine of Siena talks about the dance, the, trin the dance of the Holy Trinity, and we're invited into that dance. It's movement, it's relationship. And what is the best way that we can see love in our lives? Surely, it's the family. The family. Forget about the atom, the sun, um, the mansion, all these images that we can use for God. The family is the best image. A family of love, which is also creative generative, which is God. So perhaps your, your family is not, is imperfect, all families are imperfect, but imagine your broken family perfect. How it would be 
And that, for me, is our best way of seeing what God is like. St. John Paul II put it beautifully. He said, God, in his deepest mystery, is not a solitude, but a family. Since he is himself fatherhood, sonship, and the essence of the family, which is love. What a beautiful quotation that is from our Pope, St. John Paul II. And actually, just to round all this up now, everything I've said is revealed, or contained, rather, right at the beginning of the Bible. St. Augustine said that the New Testament is hidden in the Old, and the Old reveals the New. So let's go right back to the beginning, the book of Genesis, chapter 1. God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. God is a relationship. It's revealed there, our. So God created human, humankind in his image. In the likeness of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The family. The family is our best image of God. And it's when we love, when we become family, that we most look like God. So let's conclude with a prayer. And the prayer which gives glory to God as the Trinity. So we pray together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I'm Bishop David McGough, an auxiliary bishop here in this archdiocese. I'm just so delighted through yourselves. Christian faith will have a voice. And you're here today giving voice to that media. The greatest gift that any of us has is the gift of life itself. We struggle throughout our lives to, to live life to the full, and we sometimes mess it up. But that life is so precious, and it is God's gift to each one of us from the very first moment of conception to the last moment of our lives, to be cherished, to be loved, to be safeguarded. So God bless you all. Shalom World, God's own channel.